A raw chicken egg is slammed into the board at high speed and cracked. This doom guy, Agdon, is superhuman. A man with superpowers. Probably float above the clouds, burn metal with lasers from his eyes. Those kind of superpowers. Yes, they are. But truth be told, the superpowers of this young man tied to a cross are pretty far removed from lasers. His so-called superpower is a useless power that no one would ever want for themselves. So even the guy himself has no idea how he, the most pathetic superhero ever, ended up in front of an angry populace on a scaffold. This power of his doesn't deserve that much attention. As the angry crowd chants death to the F-class, a man in glasses, root-bound, tensely watches the people. Sanjil, came the shout of a man desperately breaking through the cluster of people. Kuhyuk, hearing his name in the crowd, the surprised guy hanging on the cross said quietly. Noticing his friend, an overjoyed Sanjil shouts to Kuhyuk not to worry about him. The boy explains that he's not afraid of heights, and there's a great view from here. Everything will be fine. Looking at the tied-up young man, Kuhyuk shouts back at him that those bastards will just wipe him out. He asks his friend to wait until he saves him. In turn, the boy asks him to stay back, because everything is already decided and nothing can be done. Suddenly, an unknown man in a cloak spoke, terrorist Sanjil Na, kidnapped heads of state, destroyed school buildings, these despicable acts of terrorism have plunged the country into chaos. You know who the real culprit is, don't you? The mysterious man asked, looking at the boy eerily. Remaining silent, the boy averts his gaze. He knows, knows who's behind all this, who planned all these crimes. I take it that silence is a sign of agreement. The cloaked man looked at Sanjil with disdain. Flying through the air, a stranger addresses the citizens of Korea. He asks people to pay attention to the fact that unlike other terrorists who have admitted their guilt, Sanjil Na continues to deny his involvement. Some might think he's just a student, just a kid who hasn't figured out his power. However, the man in the cape asks the citizens not to let the guy's appearance fool them. A stranger has video of terrorists carrying out attacks. This tape is evidence that behind the face of an innocent boy lurks a terrible criminal. Take a look and see for yourself. The man shouted loudly, pressing the button of the remote control he held in his hand. Interference appeared on the screen in the plaza. After a few seconds, a tape called Kidnapping the President began playing. An unidentified man hiding his face with a hood is correcting a video camera. Hello everyone. A sheet of paper with that on it was shown to me by a strangely dressed guy. When he flipped through the notebook, the next page said they were a group of supervillains. The following he narrated may be hard to believe, but last week they kidnapped the president of this country. Saying nothing out loud and just showing a notepad, the guy smirkingly asks if the audience can guess who they are. Kidnapping the president. Mass bombings. Supervillains with unmatched superpowers. We are. The superheroes of Class F. Just three weeks before that scandalous video, Sanjil was waiting to interview for an intern position at a small company. He's that unremarkable guy. By the way, the invisible dude sitting behind Mr. Cool Headphones, Mr. Sanjil Na, is Mr. Sanjil Na here. Suddenly swinging open the door, fixing his glasses, the employer shouted. The surprised guy, pointing a finger at himself, explained that he was the one the man was looking for. Running up to the young man, the employer charmingly grabs his hand and tells him that he read his resume. He admiringly asks if the guy really went to the leader's academy. Is he really superhuman? Sanjil awkwardly confirmed and immediately tried to say something in response. However, the man didn't seem to need any more explanations, just to think. A gifted person like this guy would work for such a small company. The mega corporations will be very dissatisfied. The employer, elegantly pouring tea asks the young man to make himself comfortable. He cheerfully explains that all formalities will soon be settled. When Sanjil asks what about the interview, the frilly man in the purple jacket, adjusting his glasses, confidently grabs the remote and turns on the tape. The Academy of Leaders, the best school for superhumans in the entire country. Its graduates are at the top of society. They lend their talents to the best corporations and government agencies. Their abilities are front-page news. In short, it's a school for future heroes. The employer excitedly explains that he's a big fan. He is honored to hire a superhuman. Sanjil, lowering his eyes from such pressure, 
gets very agitated, running his fingers over his nerves and sweating. The guy says that he is, of course, superhuman. But there is one small problem. I'm in F class. The young man scratched the back of his head awkwardly, glancing at his employer, who had flinched in surprise. The next second from a juicy kick in the ass, Sanjal, clustered together, flies out of the company building. While the guy was shedding tears in despair while lying on the ground, the employer had already accepted the dude sitting next to the young man recently. This asshole didn't even take off his headphones and get a job. What can he do that I can't? Sanjal thought disappointedly as the doggy that had run up to him sniffed his bag. Before he knew it, the dog was already running away with his dirty briefcase he had just bought. Yeah. This is what a typical day in the life of an F-class student looks like. At that moment, an unknown man with a case on his shoulder walked behind the guy. Interesting, thought the stranger in glasses as he looked at the desperate Sanjal. Holding toast with an egg in her teeth, a girl with an A-badge on her chest is in a big hurry to get somewhere. A group of students, late for class, fly over an old man and his child through the air in a hurry to get back to class, while the grandfather, holding a newspaper, scolds the teenagers flying dangerously over people. The granddaughter, standing nearby, admires the students of the Leader Academy, noticing another superhero in the same uniform walking nearby. The older man calls out to him to teach him a lesson. The girl asks her grandfather to calm down, the guy has a badge too. But it's not like the others. It's an F. Hearing this, Sanjal turned his attention to them. The guide sket unhappily, whereupon his eyes lit up brightly. In the same second, numbers and symbols began to appear on the young man's face. Looking at the frightened grandfather cradling his sobbing granddaughter, Sanjal saw their birthdays. Wow, so you two were born in August. The boy suddenly exclaimed enthusiastically. As he ran away, he told the old man and his granddaughter in a friendly manner that there was a great pastry shop nearby. They have reservations for a month. They should try their birthday cake. Leaders Academy, F Class, Sanjal Na, Superpower, the ability to see birthdays. The appearance of superhumans in this world was sudden. According to research, strong experiences experienced during adolescence can develop a corresponding superpower in a person. But the thing is, if the experience is mundane, the superpower will be the same. Suddenly, Sanjal crashes into some concrete wall. Uh, no. He just didn't see some pissed off big guy in front of him. The young man tries to save his life by apologizing to this jock. In turn, the people who watch the guy collide with the A-class jock. Wonder if they should call an ambulance. At this time, a terrified Sanjal uses his superpower. Things are heating up. This pissed off big guy's about to smash this guy to the ground. Happy birthday. Sanjal shouted happily, firing a celebratory clapper. At this turn of events, looking at the smiling boy, Ku Hyak was petrified. Placing a small item in the thug's hand, the young man cheerfully explains to him that he can see other people's birthdays. So he always carries clappers and presents with him. Scratching the back of his head cheerfully, Sanjal says that this gift is nothing special. It's just a keychain. But at least it's something. Let go, came the irritated voice. You're holding my hand. With a disdainful glance at the boy, Ku Hyok said. With an awkward chuckle, the young man apologizes and releases his hand, whereupon the bulky man simply turns around, remaining standing still. Mockingly looking at Sanjal going about his business, the students of the other classes laugh at him. They remark that Ku Hyok was very mean. This often happens when the F class tries to suck up to the A class. These losers don't learn anything. Yeah, that's the life of an F class student. They're treated like garbage anywhere. Well, that's not surprising. No matter how you look at it. Not all superhumans are equal. And the student council knows this very well. So all the losers are rounded up and quarantined in a classroom reserved for the dregs of the school, too pathetic to be called superhumans. It was clear right away. This class is a dump. Sullen students passing the time by having fun with their superpowers. Students who are ignored by teachers and friends. Upon arriving here, Sanjal realized that they were not welcome here. And so it went on for all three years, approaching the entrance to the classroom. The guy knows exactly what awaits him behind that door. A classroom full of desperate classmates who have lost any hope due to discrimination. Opening the door, 
Sanjal saw his classmates sitting obediently at their desks with their hands in the air and a strange man standing next to the blackboard with a painted grenade launcher in his hands. The guy was petrified of what he saw. What? Oh, here comes the headman. Have a seat. The man with the RPG said, pointing his finger at Sanjal and leaning against the blackboard. Wait a minute. This is not normal at all. What the hell is going on here? While Sanjal was trying to realize everything, the unknown man asked him to sit down. All right? Well, then stay where you are. The man added, noticing that the dumbfounded boy couldn't move from his seat in surprise. Bringing his hand up to his face, the man decides to introduce himself once more. Now that everyone is gathered, my name is Kahoon Choi, and as of today, I am your class teacher. He raised his glasses and said with a sly smile. Now let's get to the fun part. Today's after-school activity is kidnapping the president. What, you've been assigned to of class? Cohen was asked in surprise by his partner sitting next to him. This is insane. With his skills, he should be at least an A grade. Taking off his earpiece and scratching his ear, Cohen asks his partner to keep the flattery to himself. He asks his comrade if he remembers what they talked about last time. The driver asks if he can get everything ready. The colleague replies that he can certainly do all that. However, he wonders what Cohen is going to do. Is he going to organize some kind of anti-government rally? No. The man with the glasses answered immediately and confidently. We're going on a little tour. Leaders Academy, a high school for students with superpowers. And today, a new classroom teacher has been assigned to an F-class made up of total losers. One of the students without raising her hands, called everything going on here boring. Flipping through the book, she says confidently that it's definitely just another useless drill. And if there's a joke, it's a lame one. Yeah, this dude's just messing around, right? Even brought a fake grenade launcher. She feels a little sorry for that guy. Hey, teacher, is it real? You think I'm messing around here? Cohen said with an indifferent frown. The next moment, the entire office was filled with multicolored smoke. While the students panic, not understanding where the smoke came from, Cohen standing at the school blackboard, explains that it's his superpower. The boy who cried wolf, if you inhale that smoke, no one will believe a word you say. But don't worry, it doesn't work on those who also inhaled the smoke. Your pathetic classmates are the only ones who will believe you. At that moment two guys from the back pairs, taking advantage of the situation that no one could see them, started actively typing something on their phones. The teacher took the chalk in his hand, which was lying on the table, and then in one fell swoop, tossing crayons like bullets, shot the students' phones through and through. He asked everyone here to be a little more serious from now on, and obey your teacher if you don't want to be a liar to everyone for the rest of your life. Blowing the remnants of chalk off his hand, Cahoon Choi said, sitting in the cafeteria eating a sandwich in one bite. Sanjal can't believe they got a blackmailing psychopathic teacher. Looking at his classmates sitting across from him, the boy, still sitting with a sandwich in his mouth, asks them why they are so quiet. The girl asks him to be quiet, as they are dealing with a very important issue. Come on, Wanchik, does he love me? She asks her friend admiringly. Wanchik asks her to wait a bit while he activates his ability. The guy sitting next to her with ice cream in his teeth is willing to bet he doesn't. Wanchik go. F class. Superpower. The ability to choose the correct answer from two answers. Concentrating. The guy questions whether humans love is mutual. When using this power in space, omniscient eyes are opened. Ah. No answer. Looking awkwardly at his friend, Wanchik said, weakness. Can't answer if there are more than two answer choices. Maybe it's not just likes or dislikes. There's a third option, hates. While human screams in despair, the guy with ice cream in his teeth remarks that love is over before it can begin. Looking at all this, Sanjal was surprised to notice that no one was taking the teacher seriously. At that moment, the TV in the school cafeteria started playing. It was broadcasting live from downtown. Superheroes in action. The bank robbers got what they deserved. All thanks to Aquadra. Look at that. As expected from the strongest superhero team ever. The newly elected prime minister used to be a member of the Aquadra 2. He is the first prime ministerial superhero. Under his leadership, 
The A Squadra elite were appointed to the Presidential Guard Service. A Squadra is a non profit organization founded by the A grade descendants of the Leaders Academy. When people say superheroes, they mean them. Sangil believes they deserve it. After all, they're the ones who protect the citizens with their superpowers. And not just the citizens, they're the president's security detail now. The A class students who approached their table started mocking the students sitting at the table. Those F class losers are almost drooling at this news. Of course, because A class is the best and A squad is the best of the best. Leaning over to Sandal, the blonde guy taps him on the shoulder mockingly telling him that he can get him an autograph if he wants one. He tells the guy that it's better to ask him than his F-class seniors. They're all useless, beggarly pieces of trash. Are they even on TV? Oh, that's right, they're on TV. Despicable crime-ridden losers getting what they deserve from the heroes. Say that again, you bastard. Sanjil's classmate shouted angrily, jumping up from his chair. Hosen Yoon, A-class, superpower, predicting the development of events and actions, without taking his hands out of his pockets. Hosen, with his eyes closed, dodged his opponent's blow in one motion and shoved him in the back. When the guy flew back against the other wall, the blonde man said with a chuckle that it was very predictable. They're not the equal of A-class. A-class is on a whole other level. When he approached Choin, the worried headman asked if he was all right. The boy stood up and said he was fine and thanked Sanjil. There are only two grades in this school. The A class is where most of the students are placed. The very fact of having superpowers makes a person special. So being assigned to the A class is just a confirmation of his or her exclusivity. You ask, what about the F class? Here's an example. Aji Yan, F class, superpower, turns garbage into a cigarette butt, picking up the wrapper from the floor and turning it into a cigarette. Aji held it out to Hosen, asking him to throw away the trash behind him. Grinning, the blonde allowed the guy to keep the cigarette butt. That's how it works. If your superpower is completely useless, you go F class. On the left, holding his head up is Yunking Chan. Superpower can catch cell phone service anywhere. On the right, sitting with his hands behind the back of his head is Kiyu Jiang. Superpower can charge a cell phone to 3%. Yung King, looking frustratedly at his chalky shot phone, says how fed up he is with those A class jerks, always trying to ruin their lives. Now they have a crazy teacher with them. Kiyu in turn tells him to just ignore them. Look, Yufo, the girl suddenly shouted then took a bite of the ice cream of the distracted guy sitting next to her. It's Yujuha, superpower. When she says Yufo, people turn around. The guy with purple hair, showing off his figure, says he doesn't have to be a superhero. The only one he wants to protect is Natsu-chan. Everything previously listed describes pretty well who the F-class students are. Sanjil can't imagine them kidnapping the president. Teacher Kohen would have a better chance with the A-grade students than with them. Don't worry, there was a low whisper behind him, startling the boy. Chinsu Lee, superpower. Hair changes color when failure is imminent. Showing the headman his hair, Chinsu explained that it hadn't changed its natural color, and so it was fine for now. Phew, so the teacher was really just kidding. And I thought we finally had a class teacher with balls of steel. Oh, I'll call the police and turn in the escaped terrorist. Sanjil thought with a sigh of relief as he sat down at the table in the school cafeteria. Yes, I will. The boy finished his thought while sitting next to teacher Cohen on the bus. Wait, what? Realizing where they were going, the young man was stunned. In the middle of the night, a bus filled with F-rated leaders academy students is headed to an unknown destination. Korea's main government building, We've arrived, soldiers. It's time to kidnap the president. Teacher Cohen shouted excitedly, raising his hand joyfully. When they saw where they had arrived, all the students burst into tears of despair. It really is the blue house. Taking notice, the class teacher clarified something. No one would help them. He warned them not to even try to call the police and reminded them of his superpower. They are all now the girls and boys who cried wolf. Realizing the hopelessness of the situation, all the students fell into despair. Some have already tried calling the police. They were simply asked to stop the pranks. This superpower also worked on Aji, who turns trash into cigarette butts. A policeman told him not to smoke at school. Yujuha said that when she called her mom, the mom just interrupted her and dropped her. 
The crazy teacher is right. No one really believes them. While they were in the shock of becoming the stupidest liars, he just took turns kicking them onto the bus. They were calling for help, but no one believed the F class had been kidnapped by an armed terrorist, scratching his ear. Teacher Cohen demanded the students to move. They needed to make it before the guards intensified. Looking at him, Sanjil thinks about what to do now. He's the headmaster, so he has to protect the class. It all seemed so unreal. They had no idea how bad it really was. Turning to the teacher, Sanjil says he has no idea what happened between him and the president, but he is sure that the students will only be a hindrance to Cohen. Raising his hand, he promises that they will stay away from the police. As soon as the guy wanted to ask them to let go, the teacher immediately aimed a loaded painted grenade launcher at his forehead. Head man, right, you go first. Cahoon Choi sat in cold blood while aiming the RPG at the young man. The dumbfounded classmates just stare at what is happening, unable to do anything. Everything depends on her now. Wujuha can distract him with her ability. However, as soon as the girl started to utter the cherished phrase, the teacher immediately, in one motion, without looking at her, gagged her with the palm of his hand. You're brave, I admit, but in this country, one must obey one's elders. Cohen said, turning around to look at her. But let me tell you one more time. Your powers won't work on me. A dumbfounded Sanjil stares in horror at the RPG held to his face. Oh, shit. He's not kidding. He's serious. Aiming a grenade launcher at the students, the teacher orders the maggots to hurry up and grab their gear from the bag and change their clothes. From the side, standing on the bus, with the divine ram behind him, a silhouette of an unknown being watches it all. Poking Sanjil in the back with a loaded weapon, Cohen demands hurry up and no nonsense. Feeling as if he was being watched, the man turned around sharply. Looking at the bus, he didn't notice anything strange. Maybe it was the wind. The teacher seems to be getting as nervous as these nitwits. The F-grade students will have to infiltrate the Blue House. Will they be able to kidnap the president of Korea? While Sanjil wishes the teacher would get the grenade launcher away from the back of his head, Cohen, looking through his binoculars, admiringly notices that the guards are indeed busy preparing for tomorrow's event. He decides to enter the compound. Through the east entrance, the students still can't believe they're gonna kidnap the president. It's not fair. They've been kidnapped themselves. The guy with purple hair, cradling the figurine, realizes he should have left Natsu-chan at home. The headman tries to calm the guys down and says everything will be fine. And so, Aji said, taking the lollipop out of his mouth. You dragged us to the blue house in the middle of the night. What's next? The boy asked, casually recycling a lollipop into a cigarette butt. Hmm. We just go in and grab the president. After telling the confused kids such a simple plan, Cohen explained. While he happily points his hands to the blue house, the students still can't figure out how they'll pull it off. Pointing the grenade launcher at Sanjil again, the teacher tells him to go forward. He's in charge. He has to lead the team. While the boy is sobbing, asking what they want him to do, his classmates are already reciting a prayer for his repose. Okay. I'll get it done. But first, we all need to calm down, says the headmaster, trying to calm down his strange teacher. So here is our plan A. There is no plan A. We don't stand a chance. One of the guards standing at the east entrance yawns, while the man in uniform, dreaming of a sound sleep, stretches. All the F-class students creep through the bushes towards the entrance. Suddenly someone accidentally steps on a limb, drawing the guard's attention. You're already caught you gotta be kidding me. This is Eagle 3. Over. Intruders at the gate. The guard shouted into the radio at the same second, but no sooner had he finished speaking than a heavy metal object hit him in the back of the head from behind. As the man falls unconscious, the dazed students watch him peering out from behind the bushes. They've raised the alarm. Hurry up and get inside, shouted teacher Cohen, holding the RPG in both hands like a bat. At the same moment, the students jumped out of the bushes and quickly ran towards the entrance of the blue house. They ran. They had no other choice. Their legs were weaning. They were shaking with fear. But they kept running. Looking at this strange picture, the guard's pistols raised, could not understand what was happening. Pulling the bolt of his weapon, the uniformed man sprinted out towards the sobbing students in despair. What else could we have done? What else did you want us to do? 
There was a stigma attached to being an F-class student. Just by seeing the F-class badge, everyone around started to mock the wearer. Well, apparently his superpower really sucks. Sorry, we don't take F-class students for internships. This happens a lot when the F-class tries to suck up to the A-class. That's what people around here are saying, we're F-class, and F means we're losers, there's nothing we can do about it, nothing at all. Sanjil's gloomy musings were interrupted by a blue-haired boy who jumped out abruptly in front of him, Yinicho, superpower, able to muffle the sound around him. Standing in front of the guards, he immediately stunned them, clouding their minds. The people in uniform can't understand what's going on, they can't even hear themselves. The walkie-talkies are useless too. The overjoyed classmates, still running, praise the surprised Yini. He never realized his power was so useful. He only used it when he was studying in the library. Suddenly two more guards jumped out in front of the students, aiming their weapons at them. Look, a UFO, shouted Yujuha pointing into the sky. In the same second, all the guards who heard this turned around and looked up. It's not for you. Wake up, trying to bring Sanjil to his senses. A classmate shouts to him while the girl tries to deduce the direction to run in. Heading towards the main building of the blue house, with each new step taken, the classmates begin to realize something. They're getting it. As they run, a fork with two main directions appears in front of them. At this point it becomes unclear which way to run next. That way, using his ability and pointing in the right direction, Wanchik shouted confidently. They call us losers, but working together, even we can do something. Stopping for a break outside one of the buildings, teacher Cohen informed the students that they had somehow miraculously managed to break away. He praises his students, that was great. They even outdid themselves, considering this was their first experience of putting abilities into practice. You see that building? That's the president's residence. We're very close, explained the class teacher pointing to a small house nearby. Turning to the teacher, the headman clarified if they would indeed take the president hostage. Cohen, taking off his glasses, tells the boy not to worry. In this country, juvenile delinquents are usually given minor punishments. The young man said indignantly that the teacher knew that's not what the boy was saying. Less words, more deeds. It's too late to back out now. Smiling, the man muttered. Besides, those guards couldn't even touch you. You may be F-class, but you're still super people. You're a far cry from regular people. The teacher explains that the superhero guards, a squadra, who have been assigned to protect the president, are now busy preparing for the holiday and are elsewhere. And so now is the best chance. We'll kidnap the president and get out unharmed, shouted Cohen. However, almost nothing ever goes according to plan, much less ventures like this one. With a frightened look at his teacher, Jinsu Lee showed him his discolored hair. Noticing this, Cohen had a strange feeling. The man abruptly jumped up from his seat. At the same second, a passenger car flew in from the air to where he had recently been standing. The dazed students fearfully scurried away to a safe distance from the fallen car, squatting down. Not realizing what was going on, teacher Cohen glanced over to where that car had come from. Got a couple seconds of sleep, you know, standing high in the sky and holding the car in the air, the stranger said, levitating cars in space. The man irritably wonders why all the criminals work at night these days. Because of people like them, he works overtime and doesn't get enough sleep. Okay, whatever, the man muttered, looking down. What brings such guests to the blue house at this hour? Inquired the head of the presidential guard and member of the A-Quadra, Sion. As he looked at him, Sanjil remembered that the man seemed to be on TV, wiping his eyes. Sion wonders what a bunch of high school kids are doing here. Pointing his finger at his opponent, Junkyun shouted that this dude was an A-Squadra. Someone like him would definitely take out their teacher in the blink of an eye. What are you yakking about? With a resentful glance at his student, Kohen quietly said. Yujuha tearfully asks Sion to help them. She explains to him that a terrorist is holding them hostage. He has kidnapped them and brought them here by force. Kidnapped and dragged in, then? Sounds like it. Looking at the girl incredulously, the A-Squadra member muttered, turning around and shaking his finger. Sion says they can't fool him. Any terrorist would start talking like that if they were caught. When an indignant Yujuha shouts out that she's not lying, the man phone in hand, 
agrees to simply escort the students to the station. He will have plenty of time to listen to their testimony. Suddenly, Cohen took out a pistol from his pocket and sharply raised it and shot several times at his opponent hanging in the air. One of the bullets flew past, catching Sion's hair a little. The shocked students stared at the enemy with their mouths hanging open. He shot him, disappointedly glancing up at the hero above Cohen sked unhappily. The A Squadra member stared blankly at them, using his superpower to stop all the bullets in front of his face, causing them to levitate in space. The next moment the bullets were on the ground. Mr. Cohoon, what are you doing here? Sian asked with a surprised look at the gunman. The students were wondering what was going on here. The two seemed to know each other. Closing his eyes, the distressed hero realized everything. Cohen's presence means only one thing. The assassination attempt on the president is real. Too bad, you were a good teacher. With a disappointed look at Cohoon Choi, Sian said quietly. The A Quadra member asked the man below how he had gotten to this life, to which the man replied that he did not have to answer. Cohen then clarified to Sian that he was not his teacher. Only those little ones have the right to call me that. The class teacher explained angrily, looking at the hero with hatred. Sian in turn remarked that a real teacher would not drag his students into state treason. Well, at least attempted state treason, but that is also punishable by capital punishment. A Quadra Sion, Superpower, Psychokinesis, the ability to control any object in sight. Suddenly, Sion from the A Quadra appears. He's going to use his power to the fullest. What will happen to the F class? Oh, that's the minister's car. I'll get a pay cut if I damage it. Gently lowering the expensive white car, the hero muttered. Meanwhile, the desperate students are trying to figure out what he meant when he said, punishable by capital punishment, yes, he's about to kill them all, this is the end, the frightened students shout to Sian that he has no right to do this, they haven't committed any serious crimes yet, the surprised hero asked the schoolchildren if they had decided to resist his will, a bunch of losers against one of the strongest heroes, fighting him, with the help of their superpowers, is the same as coming to a gunfight with a knife. But still, if they try their best, they might be able to do something after all. If they unite, they might even have a chance against a member of the A Quadra. However, all ambition is shattered by the harsh reality. Oh, don't worry. I've already seen your superpowers through the CCTV footage. Sion suddenly flew up to Wanchik and Aji and said coldly cute tricks, but alas, after these words, the hero, smiling, snapped his fingers. At the same second, a passenger car flew into the two guys at breakneck speed, flying off to the side, Sion remarks that he doesn't have it easy either, he has duties to fulfill, but since the criminals are minors, he has to restrain himself, after all, he doesn't want a scandal over abuse of power, but the hero is a little sleepy today so he warns that he's not responsible for himself. One slip and everyone here dies. Purely by accident, of course. Looking at the distraught Sion in despair, Sanjil realized that they were finished. What could they even do against this monster? At the same moment, Sion threw the bus at the guy, after which there was a loud rumble, and a huge cloud of dust and dirt rose above the blue house. With his hands on his head in despair, Sanjil ducked down and closed his eyes, realizing that even after such a loud rumble, he was somehow still not sprawled on the ground, the guy looked at the car thrown at him, a huge man stands in front of the terrified young man, using two hands to hold back the bus flying into him, Ku Hyuk Wu, A class, superpower, superhuman strength, in one motion, the bulky man threw the bus back at the dazed Sion, crashing into the hero, the bus crumpled like it was made of paper, Ouch, that hurt, flying back against the wall of the opposite building, the injured Sion muttered, looking at the devastation left behind when he was trying to soften the blow from the bus as it flew by, the hero noticed that all the students were gone, hmm, could this kid be F class too, Sion thought as he shook his suit off the dirt, in the middle of the night, under an incomplete moon, a crowd of students struggles to escape the rampaging hero, thanks to Kuhyak's strength and speed, they still manage to break away from the chase, trying to catch his breath. Sanjil thanks him for literally saving their skins. That's the A-class guy he ran into this morning, isn't it? Ku Hyuk Woo, right? How did you find us? The headman inquired of the bulky man, 
Ku Hyuk explains that he saw the teacher pushing them onto the bus, so he followed them on his bicycle. What? He was following the bus on a bike. Shit. I didn't think an A-grade student would get involved. Looking at Kao Hyuk disappointedly, Kohan thought. Approaching the frightened Sanjul. The class teacher asks him to smile, or he will totally confuse the young man. He explains to the A-class student that they are having a surprise excursion now. Everyone is having a lot of fun. At that moment, Ku Hyuk snatched the painted grenade launcher off the teacher's shoulder with a single swing. Yeah. Then why did you threaten Sanjil with that thing? The angry boy asked, crumpling the RPG in his hand with all his might. While the dumbfounded students stare at Kao Hyuk's incredible strength, teacher Kahoon is concerned about something else entirely. Damn it, he was renting this thing. Now he'll have to pay for it. Throwing away the broken grenade launcher. The student explains that everyone knows that F-class superpowers are not suitable for combat. What have you been doing here with these weaklings? Are you using them as cannon fodder? Ku Hyuk shouted, covering the bewildered Sanjil with his back. A hero shows up to save everyone. Can he kick the ass of a rogue teacher? The next morning, two A-class guys notice the F-class losers. The two of them remark that they don't usually come this late. The dark-haired student, grinning, says that it should be a rule for such trash to come by first bell. Turning to the F-class, he yelled at them, calling them assholes, to come early next time. His friend, laughing, agreed that they were sickening to look at. The whole day had been ruined, passing by the two, Sanjil gave them a blank stare with a creepy look, then walked onward with his sullen classmates. Horrified by such an aura, the A-class guys belched in fear. Is it just me or do they look darker than usual? The dark-haired student muttered as he looked at the F-class after him. What happened to them? They're all exhausted this morning. Given what happened, it's not surprising. What have you been doing here with these weaklings? Are you using them as cannon fodder? Ku Hyuk shouted, covering the bewildered Sanjil and looking at the teacher with disdain. The guy with purple hair explained to his savior that Kohen had forcefully dragged them here. Defending Natsu-chan, he said that she was all freaked out because of him. Yunkin, nodding and pointing his finger at the class teacher, added that he'd also used some kind of obscure smoke on them. What smoke? Oh, you mean my superpower. The boy who cried wolf, Kohan inquired, glancing at his students. Throwing something at Sanjil, the teacher said he used it on them. The headman caught the incomprehensible thing in his hands and looked at it. Just a regular smoke grenade. I don't have a superpower that makes others think you're lying. The classroom teacher calmly explained. A perplexed Sanjil then asked why no one believed them when they asked for help. Are you really stupid? Or are you just kidding around? Yeah, because no one cares about such a bunch of losers. With a disdainful glance at the student, Kahun Choi said, it was like being hit in the back of the head with a sledgehammer. His words had completely shaken their self-confidence. Even getting out of bed and going to school required considerable effort. Last night the Blue House was attacked by an unknown group of terrorists. To prevent further attacks and increase security, the Blue House released an official statement announcing the postponement of today's parade by two weeks. The president is perfectly safe, thanks to the timely intervention of a security detail, led by Sion from the A Quadra. Sitting at his desk and twirling the pen in his hand, Cohen is pleased that the holiday has been postponed. Now he'll have more time to think about his next move. Shit. Maybe we should have recruited a better superpowered team. Suddenly, while he was thinking all this over, a door exploded behind him. A dumbfounded Kuhyak stands in the doorway in the smoke. An attempt at a polite knock on the door had gotten out of hand. As he approached the teacher, the boy stood in front of him holding his hands behind his back and pressuring the teacher with his terrifying aura. However, Kohen was not embarrassed by this in any way. He asked the student to explain why he, such a great and mighty A-class student, was sticking his nose into the affairs of a pathetic F-class. When the teacher warned him not to even think about snitching on him, because the police and principal wouldn't believe some student anyway, Ku Hyuk held out some kind of note to him. I want to transfer, said the boy, shoving the note in the teacher's face. Say that again, looking at him, the man with glasses said incredulously. Ku Hyuk, with his red briefcase behind him, stands on the doorstep of the F class. Above his head, a plaque reads the new class motto, I'm a teacher and you're not. The dumbfounded students look at this guy with fear. 
It's A class's Ku Hyuk Woo. What's the top A class doing here? Is this some new kind of bullying? Walking over to the desk where Sanjul, who was shaking from his intimidating appearance, was sitting, the bulky man decided to take a seat next to him. Hey Ku Hyuk, so you want to sit with me? Sweating, the headman inquired in a trembling voice, ignoring Sanjul, who was about to remove his belongings from a nearby chair. The guy took off his red backpack. As he tried to carefully place his bag on his desk, he accidentally broke his desk in half. Ku Hyuk Woo, superpower, superhuman strength. With his foot kicking the front door, Kohan enters the classroom. He asks the newcomer to try not to overdo it with the force. There's no super strong, state-of-the-art equipment here in F class. So everything breaks easily. There he is. There's that psycho again. As the teacher marches to his desk, the students wonder what they will be forced to do today. I wish we had a normal class for once. Maybe math or literature. The very thought of what he has prepared for them is disturbing. What's that stuff on your desks? Textbooks. Put them away. Putting a stick on his shoulder. The class teacher demanded. I knew it. Another day of misadventures. Thought Sanjul. Putting away his textbooks while a frustrated Kuhyak, who was left without a desk, sat next to him. Kohan wants everyone to change into their gym uniforms. Today is their superpower training class. The teacher will evaluate them at the presidential parade in two weeks. He expects each of them to make some progress. When the class teacher wanted to talk about his calculations, one of the students thumped his palm loudly on his desk, thus interrupting him. As the girl rises from her seat, she says she doesn't understand what kind of training we're talking about. Did he forget that they're F class? They don't have superpowers that can be trained at all. She means they can't do anything at all with their stupid powers. Not expecting such a strange answer from his new classmate, Kuhyak asked what was wrong with her. After all, superpower training was part of the general curriculum. Sanjul, who was sitting behind him, explained that it didn't apply to them. They had training once too. But the teacher saw how useless it was and just left. Taking off his cap and placing it on the table, teacher Cohen began to explain, have you ever heard? You are what you think you are. You're gonna be a bunch of losers if you keep thinking of yourself that way. You saw it all yesterday. They treat you like you belong in a dumpster. Do you really want to live your whole life like this? Isn't it time for a change? I saw yesterday what you are capable of. It's time to get stronger. You can gain true strength. I'm sure of it. The class teacher concluded. Sitting at the front desk, the headman asked Cohen why he was so sure of this. Become stronger. Gain real strength. Sanjul wondered how the teacher could back up his words. With a confident glance at his disciple, Cahoon Choi lifted his glasses and smiled contentedly. The next second, the mechanism on the blackboard behind him kicked in and lifted it up. Behind the school blackboard hung many different awards, certificates and diplomas, belonging to their class teacher. On the wall hangs a certificate of excellence issued to Kahun Choi by the Elite Force Institute. The evaluation committee recognized him as a first-class superpower training instructor. Seeing just this certificate, Sanjul realized what a great man stood before him. No way! More than half of all A-class students had studied at this institute before coming here. This is the best academy for superhumans in the entire country. Cohen said the students now know who he really is. To them, he's just some random terrorist targeting the president. But as far as superhero training goes, he's the best in the world. Who do you think will help you more? Me or the president? Little ones, use your head. Sitting down on the teacher's desk and putting his foot on his leg, the teacher said confidently. Do as I say for the next two weeks and you will reap the golden fruits of your labors. Delicious treats and beautiful flowers stand on a beautifully set table. An incredible room, all decorated in gold, gleaming with purity. The shocked Korean president sits on his bed, cradling his pillow. While the president tries to figure out what happened to his bedroom, Sion, standing by the ruin wall, wishes a good morning to the head of state. Smiling, the hero asks the man not to worry. Nothing out of the ordinary has happened. He tells him that a bunch of terrorists just tried to kidnap him that night. The president yells at Sion, asking how it's possible to be calm here. He wonders where these criminals are now, whether the hero has caught them. Unfortunately, they managed to get away. But rest assured, under the protection of the A Squadra, no one will lay a finger on you. Sion said with a confident look at the head of state. 
Holding a lollipop in his hand, Cohen asks the class not to worry, he promises that under his leadership, their dream of kidnapping the president will come true. Well, if you practice these two weeks, licking a candy bar, the classroom teacher added, while the outraged students try to figure out when kidnapping the president became their whim. Raising his hand, Junkyun asked where the training would be held. After all, the F class was not allowed to use the gym. In response, the teacher asked the students not to worry. He had already called someone for help. At the same moment, apologizing for the delay, a man entered the classroom, holding his head. He explained that he was late because of the service. And this guy looks a lot like a priest or maybe a black metal musician from some band. Hearing such speculations about himself, the man said that, first of all, he had been trained by that crappy teacher, and secondly, black metal is the music of Satan. It corrupts young souls. Clutching the cross in his hand, he explained. Puzzled students asked why he had a guitar case behind his back. Pressing the man against him and patting him on the shoulder, Cohen introduced him. Meet Von Rack. His superpower is dimensional creation, creating measurements. That's right. He imagines a space in his head and voila, a pocket dimension. Such power can be dangerous if it falls into the wrong hands. For example, a supervillain with this power could stealthily lock someone in a pocket dimension or set up a secret laboratory for human experimentation. But this kid's good. Worst case scenario. He creates a secret confessional. Kissing the cross, Von Rack confirms this by saying that he will use his power for the glory of God. Sanjil immediately envisioned this dude playing black metal in his pocket dimension with calls to kill Satan. Raising his hand, the uncomprehending headman asked Von Rack to tell him exactly where he was placing the pocket measurements. Running up to the young man, the priest gave him a lollipop and asked him to support him. This lollipop is the key. If you want to get out, you just have to bite it. The headman has figured out how to exit the dimension, but looking at the candy in his hand, he still doesn't understand how to enter. Let me show you. Holding out his hand to Sanjil, Von Rack offered. In the next second, the priest, smiling, leaned the student's hand against his chest, after which the guy's palm traveled inside his body. Sanjil, having dropped the lollipop from his hand in surprise, found himself in a pocket dimension. However, it was not that simple. Once inside, the headman, unable to feel the ground beneath his feet, flew down from a great height. A couple seconds later, the guy, with great speed, plastered himself to the floor. At the same moment, a cold-blooded Aji landed on his back with a screaming human in his arms. While they were apologizing to the breathless Sanjil, teacher Cohen collapsed to the ground nearby. The transfer is complete. As the students looked around and looked at themselves, they noticed that they were wearing their gym uniforms, although they had not changed into them. Continuing to lick the lollipop, Cohen grudgingly says that he'll never get used to this. In turn, Von Rack objects, saying that it's even worse for him. It's hard to even imagine how weird it is to suck people through your body. Be that as it may. Welcome to one of my dimensions, this is the testing arena, it's actually my personal training space, but Mr. Cohoon asked me to adapt it for you. The priest explained while looking up into the sky. The students wondered what their workouts would consist of, Kuhyak can just pull iron and get stronger, but the others can't train their superpowers that way. The classroom teacher asked the students not to worry. He and Von Rack had already taken care of everything. So, who's first? Yi and Yi volunteered first. Yang Gi Chao, vice chairman. Unlike Sanjil, he's reliable and responsible. So people usually trust him with important problems. Cohen asked the guy to walk over to the button and press it. Not doubting his teacher in the slightest, Yanni immediately pressed the button with his palm. At the same moment, the deputy headman immediately found himself in a small cage. While the boy is trying to figure out what's going on, Bonrak, looking disdainfully at a satisfied Cohen, asks him to treat his students with respect for once. The teacher, licking a lollipop with his already blue tongue, explains that this thing will just scan the guy's superpowers. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. Do you remember how you got your superpowers? Sanjil and Vonchik approached and the priest asked. You haven't forgotten, have you? This is one of the most memorable moments of your life. When the superpower scan was complete, Yini, standing in the middle of the cage, looked lousy. Suddenly, the creation of a training site based on the information received began. 
The cage along with the button immediately disappeared, leaving the guy alone in the arena. At that moment, an unknown creature ran past the deputy headman, turning towards the teacher. Yanni shouted about the strange bouncing ball that had appeared here. Suddenly, this strange creature shrieked with such loudness that it not only deafened the guy, but also broke his glasses. Will you shut up? You almost made me deaf. The young man shouted irritably, silencing the bouncing ball with his superpower. Having stopped hearing that disgusting sound, Yi and Yi exhaled in relief, wiping his sweaty forehead with his hand. But at that moment, those vile creatures jumped at him from all sides and started screaming with even more volume. Unlike the cheerful Kohen and irritated Kuhiak, Sanjil forgot to cover his ears, causing him to stand hopelessly deaf and stare at the scene. One of the bouncing balls clawed into the leg of the deaf and Yini. Guy's strength works on single targets. He can fight against two or three opponents, but not against a whole crowd. Damn it, there's too many of them. His strength isn't enough to shut them all up. Shut up. Finally maddened by those vile sounds, Yanni Cho shouted in rage while sitting on his knees. Suddenly there was a sepulchral silence in the neighborhood. Walking up to him, teacher Kohan explained something very important. This small training was enough to increase the radius of his strength. A great threat awakens a great desire to overcome it. And such hope is the root of any superpower. The stronger the roots, the taller the tree. The purpose of this training is to strengthen the hope from which strength grows. Proudly looking at the exhausted student. The class teacher tells him that these are premium trainings. Even A-class students don't have easy access to them. While he praises himself, saying they are lucky to have such a teacher, Bon Rack reminds them that he is actually a coach in this dimension. Raising his hand, Yuman yells at Kohen to keep his head down. They don't need a terrorist teacher, but she asks to be let in finally. She wants to train too. Looking at her, Aji is embarrassed to see that the girl is contradicting herself. Looking at him admiringly, Sanjil realizes that teacher Kohen wasn't lying. Yi and Yi's strength had increased after this training. I wonder what will happen to the others. Yumin, superpower, can suddenly run into a person she wants to see. Aji, superpower, turns trash into cigarette butts. After the training, unlike a disgruntled Aji, who expected a training session to recycle an incredible amount of trash. Yumin is delighted with this new experience. She can't believe she got her hand shaken by a BTX member. She promises to never wash it again. Everyone really faced their obstacle and overcame it and became stronger. Maybe it'll work for him. Maybe this is the opportunity he's been waiting for all his life. Your turn, Sanjil. Teacher Kohan looked at his student and said, walking over and pressing the button, the headman decides not to get ahead of himself. That's right. Who knows what he'll encounter. He's even a little scared. Beep. Error. What? Looking at Sanjil incomprehensibly, Kohen said quietly. Sanjil na. Superpower. The ability to see birthdays. Repeatedly search for a suitable workout. Error. Isn't practice starting. But why? At least tell me why. An exercise program can't waste time on flawed people like you. That's what it's all about, said the girl standing behind the confused boy. I'm out of here. Have fun, losers. Closing her eyes, she added grudgingly. Kid you eam, superpower, absolute memory. The only one from the F class with utility. She was originally assigned to the A class, but she transferred to their class of her own volition. Why? Well, as she said, I can't breathe the same air as those freaks. This girl is a special case. She's not like the other F-class students. A surprised Kohan asked her what was wrong. Doesn't she want to participate? Kitu explains that there's nothing wrong with her powers. She just doesn't want those creepy robots testing her. Also, this training program is not suitable for everyone. Not all strengths can be useful in combat. Right, Sanjil. Turning to the doomed boy, the girl asked mockingly. Wait a minute. Am I really the biggest loser in the F class? Frustratedly looking at his feet, the young man thought. Kuhyak looked pityingly at the distraught headman. Suddenly he wanted to say something to reassure Sanjil. But it's Aji who speaks first. He comes up with one check and tells the headman to take it easy. A lot of people here feel useless. Averting his gaze. Wanchik was reminded of that blonde guy from the A squad. He'd smeared them all. Looking up. Aji told me that he was a pretty good fighter. But fists don't work if your enemy can throw cars. And his superpower wasn't much used during the operation. But you know, 
Whatever about this failure, I'm not giving up just because of her. With his hands in his pockets, the boy said firmly. As he approached the self-conscious Kiju, he remembered that she had said something about battle power. That said, no one had said a word to her that night. Even though her absolute memory was completely useless against Sion. When the girl aggressively shouted at Aji not to dare talk to her as if she was one of them, she was interrupted by the headman. A tense Sanjil asked the boys not to quarrel with each other. This is the first F-class force training. This is a day we should remember, shouted the boy admiringly, trying to cheer up his classmates. Then he turned around and took a lollipop out of his pocket. When a flustered Aji wanted to say something to him, Sanjil asked him not to worry about him. He didn't expect anything from his power anyway. He asked his friends to continue, and he himself would go to do math. The young man brings the lollipop to his mouth and takes a bite. I'm very happy for you. Turning around to his classmates, smiling disappointedly, Sanjil said, also taking out a lollipop, Kiju says he made a wise choice. She too is about to go out to sit down to her textbooks. Too immediately after these words, there is a flash, and the girl disappears from this dimension. A worried Kuhyak is still looking at the spot from where Sanjil disappeared. While the F-class is practicing in the pocket dimension, the A-class is having fun in the stadium playing soccer using their superpowers. Sitting on a bench nearby, a dejected Sanjil watches it all. Even as a child, he didn't understand why he was ignored. He's superhuman, too. It's because people prefer to lash out at those who are slightly inferior to them. They lack the courage to provoke those who are vastly superior to them. They only show their envy when they get away with it. You're not superhuman. You're no better than me. They're gonna say that because they can't stand to see you get the fruits of your labor. You know what I mean. Remember, Sanjil, your superpower was generated by a strong desire. Such an ability proves that you have a sharp mind. Lovingly, the man explained, placing his hand on the boy's head. But now the boy understood. It's a lie, father. Times have changed. You can't do everything with your brain. Sanjil wants more. Something mo. He was interrupted by an unknown object that flew at a great speed right under his eye. Ah, what is that? Just a bracelet. A child standing behind the fence, waving her arms, asks her uncle, who is lying on the ground, to give the bracelet to her. A surprised Sanjil looks at her awkwardly. Uncle, it's not like he's that old. Reaching up, he hands the thing back to the girl. She thanks the guy and introduces herself as Ayan. She is in the third grade. Upon noticing the young man's form, the girl immediately realized he had superpowers. The child tells her that she knows people at his school can do cool things like fly and shoot fire out of their hands. She cheerfully asks him to show her what he can do. Withdrawing his gaze, Sanjil apologizes to the girl, explaining that his superpower has nothing to do with flight and fire. He tells the surprised child that he can find out when her birthday is, but that's all he can do. So you can guess other people's birthdays. Ayan said thoughtfully as she looked at him. Sounds really boring, she said suddenly. Those words press the boy's heartstrings. Proud of herself. The girl says she can also tell the young man when her daddy's birthday is. April 23rd. What do you think? I'm a superhero too, just like you. She shrieked delightedly, finally getting Sanjil. When the guy gave out his last gasp at her remarks, Ayan said goodbye to her superhero uncle, saying she had to run. At that moment, lying on the ground, Sanjil notices a different but very familiar person in front of him. A worried Kuhyak stands in front of him. The surprised boy immediately asks his classmate what he is doing here. Approaching Sanjil, Kuhyak tells him that he came from that dimension. He doesn't really like training. Looking at him uncomprehendingly, the headman is surprised that he doesn't like training. The guy could easily become the strongest hero if he trained his strength. That's the problem. I don't want to get stronger, Kuhyak explained, standing at full height over his headman. What he had just said made Sanjil stunned. Those words had literally cracked his psyche. Being strong isn't always a good thing, Kuhyak added, averting his gaze. Don't you want to be stronger? Do you have any idea what it's like for a weakling like me? I can't understand it. This is some arrogant nonsense from someone who has never had to put in an ounce of effort in her life. 
Sanjil stopped restraining himself and started talking out loud, when he saw Sanjil like that, Kuhyak was petrified. Why did you move to F class? Aren't you the strongest in A class? Seriously, Cookie, look around. How do you think the rest of us feel being around you? You're a constant reminder that we're all never gonna be good enough for A class. No one from the F class wants you here. Sanjil shouted in fury and frustration. Saying this, the boy came to his senses. Realizing what he had just said, Sanjil looked at Kuhyak standing in front of him. Shit, I snapped at him. An unknown man was watching the whole incident from the bushes with binoculars. Yep. Now I know where to start. Taking the binoculars away from his face, smiling. Teacher Cohen said contentedly. He did it. Verbal aggression. You don't belong here. Go back to your class. As Sanjil tries to find the words to apologize to his classmate, Kuhyak looks disappointedly at his feet. My bad. I guess I don't take the hint. Turning around, the boy said frustratedly. After these words, Kuhyak walked out of there, leaving the headman alone with himself and his gloomy thoughts. And your tough kid, the class teacher suddenly emerged from the bushes. Teacher, turning around, the boy shouted in surprise. Lifting his glasses, Kohen said disappointedly, he had now lost the only student he could rely on. The man explains that if Kuhyak transfers back to A class, Sanjil will have only himself to blame. The frightened headman already imagines his classmate running away from him in tears, shouting that he hates him, lowering his gaze. Sanjil says frustratedly that he doesn't understand how Kuhyak could take offense at his words. I mean, he's on a whole other level. The guy doesn't understand why someone so strong would transfer into their class. And then he gets hooked up with a loser who can't even coach his own pathetic ability. Pathetic you say. Do you really think so? Looking at the young man, the teacher asked puzzled. Abruptly turning around, the classroom teacher told the boy to follow him. I have for you. A special lesson. Teacher Cohen explained. Looking at Sanjil and lowering his glasses. A few minutes later, the teacher already has the guy by the scruff of the neck, standing outside the police station. The investigators are inside talking excitedly about some crime in which a superhuman was the culprit. One of the police officers shouts in displeasure that he always said they needed more superhuman officers. Looking around, Sanjil can't figure out what they forgot at the police station. They tried to kidnap the president. What the hell are they doing here? Grabbing the kid by the shoulder, Cohen explains that it seems the police weren't informed that they were the ones who broke into the blue house. If the student keeps quiet, everything will be fine. When the teacher said hello to one of the investigators, the investigator mistook him for a deliveryman and asked him to leave the food on the table. Ah, it's you. Turning his attention to Cohen, the man in the green jacket said lazily. When the teacher approached him, the investigator said that he had heard that he had quit the institute to become a teacher at the Leader Academy. He praised Cohen's choice. After all, civil service is always a reliable option. Then he asked what happened. He's a tarot. Sanjil shouted before the teacher gagged him with his palm. Smiling nervously, Cohen explained that he had just stopped by to say hello and see how things were going. Rough day. With a stern look at his student, he asked the policeman, the investigator, pen in hand, reminded Cohen of the recent string of murders. It's been all over the news lately. His team had been assigned to investigate. They've spent the last two months just looking for the killer. But he's very cunning. Not a single fingerprint. A recording and a witness were obtained from the last crime scene. The perps either playing them or he's blundered. Turning on the tape, the policeman showed it to teacher Cohen. You can only see the back, but at least it's a clue. Turning to the witness in the pink hat, the investigator asked for a more detailed description of the perpetrator. The man replied that he was short and had a beard. So this is that special lesson. What is Sanjil supposed to learn here? After apologizing to his teacher in his mind, the boy realized what he had to do now. Taking out a notebook, the young man began to write down a denunciation to the police there. Teacher Cohen is the terrorist who attacked the presidential palace. Please arrest him. Snatching the notebook out of the student's hands and tearing it into small shreds at the same second, the class teacher said admiringly that this was just what they were looking for. He then asks Sanjil to come over and look at the tape. An irritated investigator warns that they are not authorized to show this material to civilians, explaining that this guy could make their job easier. Cohen asked for a chance. 
Walking over to the computer, Sanjil activated his superpower to try to find out the criminal's birthday. Rewinding the video back and forth, the guy noticed something very important. In the rearview mirror of a nearby parked car, he was able to make out the reflection of the killer's face. On the 20th day of November in the year 1987, the young man said aloud confidently, you gave the perpetrator's date of birth, right, Sanjil? Walking up to his student, Cohen asked the question loudly, so that the policeman could hear him. The dumbfounded investigator jumped up from his chair. Could this guy really know the perpetrator's birthday from the videotape? The teacher pointing his finger at Sanjil confirmed it. The angry man in the green jacket warned that Cohen better not mess with him. It's the truth. I guarantee it. Besides, you know my superpower, said the man with the glasses, looking at the investigator. When the policeman asked his colleagues to urgently give him a list of people born on that day, Sanjil casually glanced at the teacher, thinking of his superpower. Ah, you don't seem to need a list. Raising his hand, the student uttered, I think he's the culprit. He has the same birthday. Pointing his finger at the witness trying to quietly get away, Sanjil explained, after these unexpected words, there was silence in the police station, and everyone there froze, trying to realize the absurdity of the situation. Pet the cat. Uh -oh.